Let us pray. Gracious Father, we thank you once again for your many blessings you bestowed upon us. Oh, gracious Father, as I come now, O oh God, to declare your word. O oh God, I ask now, God, that you make less of me and more of you. O oh God, speak to me and speak to me, O oh God. God, I ask that you just have your way in this place. O oh God, speak to your people. Oh God, then God, give them ears to hear and a heart to receive. Oh God, fill them with knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Oh God, that they may take your word and apply it to their everyday living. Oh God, bind the enemy who come, rob, steal, and destroy. Oh God, that he will steal away that which you will plan. Oh God, I ask that your word fall on good soil, that it may bring forth more fruit. Oh God, bless us and keep us. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We do give thanks to the Most High God. We thank God for the youth who sing it so beautiful. Give them a round of applause. Give them a round of applause. Oh, they've done an awesome job this morning. Amen. Some of you may look at the. Amen. You look around and you see our youth. Amen. 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 We see what God is blessing them and they, amen, is still moving forward. Amen, amen. We dare not, dare not, and will not stop here. And we're going to thank God, amen, for Sister James, amen, and Sister Sarah Wiggins for the years of service they have given us with the youth. Amen. We thank God for this service. They said it's time to pass the torch on. Amen. They have passed the torch on. And look what God has brought forth. And we just thank God. Amen. For all the youth that our youth leaders. Amen. Our musicians. Amen. All those that work with them. Amen. We thank God for them. Amen. Amen. Truly, God is good. We thank God this morning for our deacons. Amen. Deaconess. To the ushers. To all those in the house of the faith. The trustees. Amen. To you, you, and you. We thank God for you. Amen. Truly, truly, God has blessed us. God, God is keeping us. And we must continue and we must steady the course. No matter what it looks like. The wind will blow. Amen. Storms will come. Amen. But God wants us to stay on course. Because he's in control. Amen. He is the captain of the ship. Amen. And he said, just stay on board. Everything going to be all right. And we just must stay focused, amen, and trust him, and he will get us through. No matter what you're going through, he will get you through it. And I thank God today, amen. Amen. He's an awesome God, amen. You might look around, you might not see, you might be missing some of those that you see on a regular basis. I just ask that you pray for them. Amen, amen. Just pray for them. Amen. And, and, and if God's will, they'll be back with us soon. Amen. But we must remember to pray one for another. Amen. Please, please don't be selfish. Amen. Amen. As we learned in our Sunday school this morning, amen, that, 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 that love, amen, is not selfish. Love is not self-centered. Amen. We share and we spread love among one another. And praying one for another is another way of showing love, of having love one for another. Amen. Let them know that you are concerned. Amen. You, you, if you haven't called and talked to someone that you haven't seen, please call them and let them know you're thinking about them. Let them know you miss them and you're praying for them. Amen. This is, this is your family. Amen. We do have our immediate family, but God has extended our family, which is our church family. We are family. We are to show love and care one for another. Amen. Amen. Truly, God is good. Thank God this morning for my wife, Lady Freshwater. Amen. Just give them a nice wave, Lady Freshwater. Amen. There is a word from the Lord. I would try not to be too long, amen, but amen, I would do, amen, what the Spirit would help me to do, amen. amen. To those of you that have your Bibles this morning, let's go to the book of Ecclesiastes, amen, Ecclesiastes. 
12th chapter. We're just going to read a couple verses out of it. Please ask us the 12th chapter. And when you have it, you may stand. Now we begin the 13th verse. Thirteen verse. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment. With every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Amen. You may be seated. My thought, amen, will come from the 13th verse. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For thought or subject, the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God. Fear God. Ecclesiastes is all about Solomon analyzing his life experiences. In this profound book, Solomon takes us on a reflective journey through his life, explaining how everything he had tried, tested, or tasted have been meaningless, useless, irrational, pointless, foolish, and empty. I want you to remember that these words are from one who had it all, had intellect, had power, oh, yeah. had wealth, had authority. These words came from him. You might ask the question, where did this wisdom and knowledge come from? Where did he get this power, this wealth? Where did it come from? Well, we must look back over Solomon's life. We must look at Solomon's life, amen, before, amen, he became king. See, Solomon became king when his father David died. Just in case some of you don't know that Solomon is the son of David. Amen. But he didn't come king without some interference. He didn't come king just automatically with ease. We find, amen, in Solomon's life, amen, that he had a brother. Matter of fact, he had totally brothers, 19 brothers all together. But Solomon was the fourth or fifth oldest child. Normally during that time, the oldest child would become king. The oldest male child will become king. But we find, amen, in this story about Solomon, amen, that Solomon's oldest brother, amen, raped his sister, amen, and then his other brother killed the brother that raped his sister, amen, which his name was Absalom. He killed his older brother. But as we look at this story, there's still two or three other brothers in front of Solomon. Well, we find that Absalom, the one that killed his older brother, amen, he, he, he died in a rebellion, amen. He died. And then there was another brother, I believe his name was Daniel, amen. The Bible just has his name. There's nothing said about him now other than he's in the genealogical line along with David's sons. Amen. Then, then there was his other brother, Abinjah, amen. He was next in line for the kingship. But this Abinjah, amen, he felt like, amen, or he already knew 
that, that, that his father David, while he was on his dying bed, he knew that David wasn't going to appoint him king because his heart wasn't right. And plus, he wasn't God's choice. We find that he decided he going to make himself king. He decided he going to take that spot. Uh, and while his father David was on his dying bed, he decided what he was going to do. I'm going to appoint myself king. What he did, amen, he went out there. Uh, and the word said he got 50 men to march before him with chariots and horses uh, to call him king. Uh, we find that he invited certain folks uh, to come to this banquet where he will make himself king. We find that he failed to realize he didn't invite the right folks. You know how we do sometimes. Sometimes we'll invite the wrong people in our circle. Sometimes we invite the wrong folks, amen, amen, to, to, to sit around us and give us advice and, and try to pull what they think is right in our heart and in our ears. Amen. We'll find that we invite, amen, those that have envy and strife, those that have jealousy in their heart. We'll find ourselves, we invite them to our party. Amen. Figure we're doing something. But we got to realize who and we got to understand because we cannot invite everyone, we cannot invite anyone into our personal pet space. We got to realize that we can't just keep some folks away from us. Some people are just a bad influence. But this this man, this Adonjah, he decided he can invite these folks out. Well, let me tell you who he left out of his in his invitation. He left out the king, number one, which was David. Amen. He left out the prophet of God. He left him out of his invitation. And he left out Solomon. Amen. Them was the main one he should have invited if he could make himself king. Because you need the support of the people. Amen. And the people heart was with David. And the people heart was with Solomon. They invited the wrong one to his party. But the Bible said that he went up and he sacrificed animals unto God. But the Bible tell me that they came back and they told Solomon Mother, which was Bathsheba. Good God Almighty, I'm quite sure you know who Bathsheba was. Bathsheba was the woman that David looked down over the property at. Good God Almighty, and David had sex with her, and David killed her husband. You know the story that this was Solomon's mother. I come to tell you, you got to invite the right people into your circle. Listen here, I want you to know that the word came to Bathsheba and Bathsheba went to Solomon and Bathsheba went to the prophet of God and she began to tell them the story about Anajah, about he got to set himself up to be king of Israel. But I want you to know what you might plan might not work out the way you want it to work out. You might be setting yourself up to be in a high position, but I come to tell you, if God is not in it, it will come to nothing. Can I go take my time on minute? The word let me know that when he had set himself up to be king, that they went and told David, and they began to tell David, said, Alan John have set himself up to be king, but look what David did. The words of David said, uh, go get Saul. Uh, this why he was lying on his dying bed. Uh, he said, go get Saul. Uh, and he told Saul, uh, he said, now Saul, uh, I want you to get on my mule. Uh, and I want you to take uh, the mighty men that's in my army uh, and line them up with you. Uh, and I want you to go through the city. Uh, I thank God uh, that God knows how to work it out. Uh, See, we might be trying to figure it out, but God already know how to work it out. And David told 
Lord. Solomon to go through this city and you ride my mule. I don't know about you, but I thank God that God know what and when and how they tell me to do it. The Bible tell me that David, after he told him that David went through the city, but look at here, the prophet of God, he was along with Solomon as they were going through the city, and they instructed the men to sing out loud, long live King Solomon, as they went through the city, the people in the city, they saw Solomon around through the city, and they began to shout, long live King Solomon, but look at here, the word tell me, I don't know, if I don't care about what you do, or whether what right or wrong, there's always somebody going to run back and tell the story. The Bible tell me that someone went and told Abijah, good God Almighty, that David, the anointed son, to be king of Jerusalem. But look at here, the Bible tell me that when he got the word, the Bible said, the fifth of them, that he lined up all around him, that Paul that he invited to be with him. The Bible tells me that these fifth of men were scattered and they ran abroad. They left them all alone. The Bible tells me that every time he fell down on his knees and cut King Solomon, he said, Now, if you will serve me and stop all this foolishness, I will not take your life. The Bible tells me. That Adam's eye, he said, I will I'll serve you, my king. I don't know about you, but what God has for you is for you. There's nobody can take away from you or what God has for you. I don't know about you, but somebody ought to shout, Oh Lord, I thank you for the victory that you brought in my life. Hallelujah. Well, well, let's get to the message. It's time to get to the message. I want you to know that King Solomon, he became a great king. For the word said in 2 Chronicles 1 and 1, and Solomon, the son of David, was strengthened in his kingdom. And the Lord, his God, was with him and magnified him exceedingly. In other words, that Solomon was a man that walked in the statutes of God. He obeyed the commandments of God. That's why God strengthened him. That's why he was exceedingly great. I want you to know because he loved the Lord and walked in the will of God. You go down in Second Chronicle, the seventh verse. Hallelujah. Second Chronicle, the first chapter and the seventh verse. It says, in that night did God appear, appear unto Solomon and said unto him, ask what you will and I shall give it to thee. I don't know about you, but this is God told him. That God told Solomon, you can ask what you will. Anything in this world that your heart desire, I the Lord thy God, I will give it unto you. I don't know about you. But I thank God, hallelujah, that Solomon, he loved the Lord. Well, listen here, a Solomon, he could have had for houses and land. He could have had for a great kingdom. But Solomon, he didn't ask for none of those things. But just in case, you don't know what I'm talking about. Well, let me reach way back, way back, and pull Solomon into the 21st century. Well, if God would ask Solomon in the 21st century, what will you have for me? I would imagine, good God Almighty, he will ask God for four or five minutes. He will ask God to give me all the beast from property. He will ask God to put in my garage. Good God, I'm a 
Give me now a wisdom and knowledge that I might go out and come in before this people for who can judge this thy people that is so great. I come to tell you of what I want you to notice in the ten verse of Solomon didn't ask anything for himself. He didn't ask anything about himself. Hallelujah. He said, just give me wisdom and knowledge on how to rule over your people. But I come to tell you, because God looked at Solomon unselfishness, because God saw the love that Solomon had for the people. I want you to know what God said in the 11 verse. He said, and God said to Solomon, because this was in thy heart, and thou hast not asked a riches wealth, a honor, or the life of thy enemy, nor yet hast thou eyes for long life, but have asked wisdom and knowledge for thyself, that thou may judge of my people, over whom I have made thee king. Wisdom and knowledge is granted unto thee, and I will give thee the riches and the wealth. Good God Almighty and honor. I don't know about you because he didn't ask for anything for himself. He got all the riches. He got all the honor. He got all the prestige that God had for him. I just got a little bit more for you and me, but here we go. I said the conclusion of the whole matter is to fear God. We got to learn how to fear God. We got to learn how to love God. And I look down through the book of the things that ask him, and it began to tell me that King Solomon, he went through life. The Bible tell me in the second chapter, he said, I sought in my heart to give myself unto wine and get acquainted my heart with wisdom and to lay hold on folly until I might see what was that good for the son of man. In other words, Solomon said, I have given my life over. Well, 
Love Mahogany and the two star love Billy D. Williams and Dan Ron. They said in that movie, Hallelujah, success is a nothing without someone you love to share it with. I don't know about you, I'm so glad that this God I say, I share my love.
don't know the Lord, that man is simply him as your Savior. This is your opportunity to come down. This is your chance to come down. Let me stand. Let me stand. Let me stand. If you don't have a church home, design join this church home. We can come. We can come. Will you come? There is power. There is power. Listen, listen to the children. Listen to them.
We're just trying to keep you from hitting our run into some of the problems and the things that we run into. This is why we talk to you. This is why we try to encourage you. Listen and obey. Father God, as we come here now with our youth, oh God, tomorrow we start another day of school. And Father God, we ask you, young God, God, that you would touch our youth today. Oh God, we ask that you, oh God, would bring peace in their heart. God, that you would take away that stony heart, that heart of stoniness, that heart, oh God, that has turned heart, heart against you, God, that heart that just been disobedient, God. God, we ask that you move it now, God. Again, God, we ask God that you bless our sons and our daughters. Oh God, that we be obedient. Oh God, as they ride the bus, as they enter the school. Oh God, we ask God that you give them an obedient spirit. Oh God, that they will make wise decisions. Oh God, they will choose to do the right thing. They will choose good over evil. And then God, I ask God that you protect them from all the predators that's out there. Those that will use them, those that will lie on them, those that will accuse them, God, we ask that you protect them now, God. Fill them, God, with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Help them, God, to comprehend. Help them to understand, God, and receive, God, what they are trying to teach them in the school. Then, God, I ask that you bless every teacher, oh God, every custodian, every bus driver, every administrator, every principal, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God, all the, oh God, the, the, those that work on the buses, the bus garage, oh God, the maintenance people, oh God, I ask that you bless them, oh God, God, that you protect them, God, I ask God, that the schools be sanitized. Oh God, that this COVID will not spread. As we name among our children, oh God. We ask for your kindness. We ask for your love, God, to protect and teach them. And then God, I ask that you look across this congregation. Oh God, there are many faces that I miss. Oh God, some ask them because of sickness. Some choose not to be here. Oh God, I'm asking now that you touch him for the pain of love. Oh God, if you know the pain that hits you in their heart. God, I ask that you move it from far from their heart. And God, I'm asking that you give them a heart of love. A, a heart of peace. Oh God, comfort them. Tell them, God. Bring them back into your house. Give them the care they need, God. To assemble themselves together. Oh God, have mercy. Oh God, everyone that's on the sick bed. Touch the bank of my right hand, God. Keep them, Lord, in your hand. Let God bless the city, this town, this community. Our city officials and leaders, our police officers. Oh God, our president, oh God, our governor. Oh God, just keep them in your hand, God. Touch their heart. Touch their mind. And God, we can say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for all that you have done. And we thank you today for what you're going to do. And the church of the living God said, Amen. 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 Tell the Lord, thank you. Tell the Lord, thank you. Tell the Lord, thank you.
thank you, Lord. Thank you. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. What an awesome God we serve. Thank you, Lord. Why don't you just give God a praise about that? If it had not been for the Lord, oh my son, where would I be? Hallelujah. We can ask now, if you have not had the chance or opportunity to give your offering, trustee or uh, usher come by, hold it up nice and high if you have it. Amen. If you have it ready, please hold it up nice and high as they pass. They'd be glad to receive it.
dismissed by saying amen, amen, and amen. May God bless you, may God keep you, amen.